Hello, and welcome to the Roots of Salsa. Today, we are going to take a dive into this cultural and musical phenomenon. We're going to go back in time to where it began and where it is today. I thank you for watching, and let's get into the Roots of Salsa. Estoy buscando un árbol que me dé sombra, porque el que tengo calor a mí me da. Estoy buscando un árbol que me dé sombra, oh, que me dé sombra, que me dé sombra. Estoy buscando un árbol que me dé sombra, porque el que tengo calor a mí me da. Estoy buscando un árbol que me dé sombra, porque el que tengo calor a mí me da. Somewhere along the line, these distinctive cultures would meet, laying the foundation for what would come to be known as salsa. This richness of music that is centuries old has traveled within the African diaspora to the New World, meaning the Great Antilles, Cuba, Puerto Rico, and Haiti and Santo Domingo. The rhythm patterns of, of, of these people comes from the Yoruba tribe, which were the most sophisticated drummers in Africa. There's something majestic about the drum, um, and very visceral. I've been, always been called the savage music. It's not savage at all. <laughs> Probably one of the more sophisticated musics on the planet. The Spanish conquistadors, they sort of turned their face, turned the other way to the music of the slaves. Let them have their music, let them have their dancing, um, let them enjoy themselves a little bit. Much different from the slave owner in the U.S., who was such a control freak. They took the drum, they took their names, they took everything. They never allowed their drum here. And little by little, from working eventually the, the plantations and all that, when you came out of there was the blues, the classic blues. De agrupar en la en una plantación personas que venían de África, de pero de distintos lugares en África, de tal manera que no pudieran hablar entre sí. Que traían su religión, traían su música, traían todo. Y entonces, claro, mucha gente se comunicaba más a través de unas formas que sí comparten distintas regiones, géneros rítmicos, formas de comunicación este corporal. Pues mira, tenía que sacar toda esa furia, todo ese coraje, todo ese sentimiento. ¿Cómo lo hacían? Se reunían los sábados en la noche, en los cañaverales, escondida de los capataces, a bailar bomba. ¡Ay, domingo, por la mañana! These songs were everything. He had to sing about his condition. Being sold, his family being separated, he had to sing to keep his plain metal bearing. He tells me that plantation owners often forced enslaved Africans to attend church to hear the message of Christianity, a message that missionaries carefully tailored to justify slavery. But the enslaved men and women took this new language and created their own spirituals, Songs that often contain coded meanings, bringing messages of hope and sometimes visions of escape. Roll, Jordan, roll. Jordan was what? A river you had to cross. Okay, that could have been what? The Mississippi River, the Tennessee River, crossing into a better place. Old Satan was a slave master. Hell was being what sold further south. So in spite of the fact that the words were actually biblical, mm -hmm. their meanings were very personal. personal. Dr. Norris explains that even though the words were from Christianity, these songs have their roots in Africa where music was infused into every aspect of life. 
In the Americas, the enslaved Africans were forced to adapt. They weren't allowed to use instruments they brought with them. They took them from them. So what, they improvised with what? Hand clapping on the side of the heart. Improvised. I look at them and I marvel over how we got through all of this, but how we got through it all by what? Singing. Salsa is a very interesting musical genre because it combines sun, guaracha, cha-cha, bomba, plena, mambo, jazz, and many other musical genres into one distinctive sound. While it is not specifically known who officially named the genre salsa, it is generally accepted that somewhere along the lines, Johnny Pacheco was one of the first to call it that in relation to this specific style of music. Call this salsa, a sauce like gumbo. <laughs> Mexico mambo, rumba, plena, jazz, merengue. You'll cook it up. The bedrock of African Cuban music was transformed by Arsenio Rodriguez, a master of the Cuban mandolin known as the Tres. Arsenio took the Cuban folk tradition called El Son and created an original, bigger sound. So what Arsenio did, the first thing he did is he added the conga drums to the orchestra. Can you imagine a Latin orchestra without a tomadora, without a conga drum? I mean, it's, it's practically unimaginable to me. Well, he was the first one to add a, a conga drum to the septetos. After that, he added a piano. There were no pianos in the bands, so they were just little guitars and one trumpet. Then he added two trumpets, then three trumpets, and then written arrangements for the trumpets. Arsenio's new sound established an intimacy between the musicians and the dancers, a dynamic that inspired the mambo. comes to America, hears jazz, and goes, aha, this is the same thing that happened in Cuba, only different. What he meant was that African music had met the West in the New World, in the United States, and come out jazz. You must take the A train to go to Sugar Hill way up in Harlem. And that, Mario Bowser's joining Cab Calloway's orchestra in 1939, is the cornerstone to the full whammy jammy of the big band sound of swing and jazz meeting Cuban dance music as Afro-Cuban music. In 1940, Mario Bausa joined forces with his brother-in-law, singer Francisco Grillo, also known as Machito. Together they created a band that fused the American jazz experience with their native love of African-Cuban rhythms. The orchestra is named Machito and the Afro-Cubans. Mario wanted that because he knew that it's what it was, there's truth, and knew that it said black is beautiful. They created a big band using jazz instrumentation, jazz arranging techniques. However, what was different is they used a Cuban rhythm section. Esa Habana 
era una Habana que mezclaba el jazz, la cancionística de los crunes y con cancioneras norteamericanas, con la ranchera mexicana, con el tango argentino, con la música flamenca. Y eso lo mezclaba con la rumba del barrio de Jesús María de Cayo Hueso. Y eso lo mezclaba con las congas de las comparsas de carnaval. Es la época de la revolución. National movements in this country begin to rise in a way that had never happened. You couldn't be living during that period of time and not be impacted by the Black Panther Party. The primary objective of the Panther Party is to establish revolutionary political power for black people. We want freedom, the power to determine the destiny of our own community. Even though I was born in Puerto Rico, most of us were born here, and we weren't going to take the kind of abuse that they were heaping on our parents. We were going to insist on respect. I was approached by Mickey Melendez. He had grown up in East Harlem, and he played baseball with my two cousins. So gradually, we started meeting, trying to figure out what we could do to improve the situation of the Puerto Rican community. One of the things that we do all the time was read the Black Panther paper. And there was this announcement of the Puerto Rican organization there, and it was called the Young Lords. We met with one of the leaders of the Young Lords in Chicago, Jose Chacha Jimenez. And he gave us the go ahead to start the East Coast wing of the Young Lords. <laughs> The young lords didn't drop from the sky. One day, and all of this happened. We were part of a continuum of history, of a legacy that had gone before us. For that revolution within the United States, we see ourselves hooking up with, with black people, with Native Amer Americans, with Asians, and with other Latinos to form a united front. Well, uh, all these groceries, over, way over 6,000 bags of groceries uh, being given away free. Uh, tomorrow night, the Black Panther Party has organized the uh, whole conference and uh, tomorrow night at the Oakland Auditorium, that's Wednesday tomorrow night at 6 p.m., uh, we expect way over 6,000 people to uh, uh, come down and get their free bags of groceries and also to register to vote. Uh, to unify the vote around the very concrete program so that in the future the black community and other poor oppressed people in any kind of vote will be unified around concrete survival programs like this so that the people won't be asked, asked by the uh, uh, politicians to endorse them, but the politicians will have to endorse people's community survival program, such as free food because people got to eat every day. This is a new approach for the Black Panther Party, isn't it? It's not, per se, a new approach. It's some new kind of work. It's all related to our original vision, though, of the Black Panther Party over six years ago. You see, when the Black Panther Party organizing this kind of operation really shows that we're implementing the original vision of the Black Panther Party.
into the 1970s, this would be one of the biggest booms for the salsa genre, with the formation of the Funny All-Stars, which would feature some of the biggest stars in salsa, including Celia Cruz, Hector Lavo, Johnny Pacheco, Willie Colon, Ruben Blades, and Chael Feliciano. Together, they would go on to cement what we now know as salsa. While they were very popular in their respective genre, Salsa still was not being accepted by the mainstream musical world, and one musician would go on to actually help usher in this era and help salsa musicians get recognition. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have some quiet, please? Let me tell you, I'm really shocked and overjoyed. This happens once in a lifetime. What I'm gonna tell you, as a matter of fact, I'm so nervous, I don't know what the hell to say. What I'm gonna say to you is something that you will not believe. God bless Salsa, but God bless the man that is gonna join you. They're gonna, this man came in to play with us and I can't believe it. This man is the biggest thing and music. Ladies and gentlemen, you won't believe this. Stevie Wonder. Will you believe this? My God. Stevie Wonder. Woo! Woo! Stevie. Come on. Will you believe this? Finally, in the 1990s, one of the biggest salsa revivals would happen when Ralph Mercado took his RMM music label and combined some of the biggest artists in salsa, old and new, including Celia Cruz, Tito Puente, Mark Anthony, India, and Tito Nieves. This would essentially bring salsa into the mainstream, cementing it as the iconic genre that it is. Today, salsa continues to be enjoyed by fans old and new, and some of the old songs see themselves being remixed and redone even today. I thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit of the history.
history behind salsa.